Hey everyone, so in this video I'll be showing you the interior of a children's book that I've been working on and I did publish it to KDP, however it's still in the review process. So I plan to show you guys the cover and the actual like Amazon listing of it once that's approved. So hopefully it gets approved soon. But I also want to go over a few tips and ways that you can create your own children's book in Canva. So I'm definitely not an expert in children's books right now. I only have this one that is being published currently. And I have watched a bunch of YouTube videos on them, um, some from The Home Boss, some from KDP With Me, some from, I'm not sure, the other YouTube channels, but I've watched a lot of different tips and tricks on Canva and how people do it. So I'm simply just going to go over some of the elements and ways you can create your children's book. So I'm not going to go over how to find niches or things like that because I'm not sure how to find the profitable niches for children's books yet. But I will tell you how I found my own niche for my book. I'll go over that when I show you the interior. So to get started, let's just say we want to have um, like a basic background. Maybe we want to do something like with a house in the background. So what I've been doing is I just type in house background. And I try to find something that is going to match the characters that I decide to use. So looking here... Uh, let me do this one. It's kind of like somebody's backyard. And it kind of depends what size book you're doing as well. Like the book I have is, I believe this is um, yeah, 8.625 by 11.25. So a lot of these horizontal ones are not really going to fit, but it's okay. We'll make it work. So let's just say we have something like this. And I'm just going to move over a little bit more. I have to detach it from the background. And I'm going to make it bigger and then move it over so we get a little more of the house there. We'll leave it there. So now let's say I want to have like a swing set. So I'm just going to type in swing set. And I'm going to try to find something that, well, there isn't really much there. Let's do playground. I'm going to try to find something that looks similar to this type of graphic so that it kind of fits in. Or maybe if I can't find a swing set, maybe we could just do, will this seesaw work here? Yeah, that's fine. So we'll do a seesaw. And let me see if I like this better. No, I do not. Let's scroll back up about the slide. Um... Not really sure. We'll go with we'll go with the slide. We'll go with that. So now I have this slide in the backyard, and you can make it bigger if you want to have like a really big slide, but that doesn't seem really proportional to me. Or you can make it smaller so it looks like it's further away. There's kind of different things that you can do here. And now I'm going to go find a character. So I'm not sure. Let's just pick something random. Maybe we'll do like um a bunny. Let's just see what comes up for bunny. Sort of graphics. Maybe there'll be like a little character or something like that. I'm not really sure. Kind of just going along with it here. Might need to pick something different. Or let's see. What about this? That would be way too big. We'll go here. So I'm going to put the bunny right there, and it kind of looks like an excited bunny to me. Let me see. It says white bunny raising her hands. We'll go with that. So then I would want to put some captions somewhere, and it's nice to have, like, blank space so that way you have room to write. Sometimes I would have to add my own, like, add an element over a design so that way the text is able to be seen. But let's just see if it works for this one. And for font, I like to do chewy um, there's a couple, like, that you can do. You could do regular font or something like that, but I don't know. Chewy just seems really fun, so I like to do that, and I'm just going to type in, um, we'll go with, like, Emily, or I'm not going to do Emily. Let's do Rosie is so excited to try out her new slide go with that and now i like to make the font bigger oh it's already 22 so i guess we'll leave it so i'm gonna just make this on another line so that way it fits in here and i could make this bigger maybe we'll do let's see 
We'll do 26. There we go. And then I'll move over to the blank space. Okay. So now I have this little page here. Rosie is so excited to try out her new slide. And this is Rosie. And this is a slide. And I mean, this is just a very simple way to do it. But I mean, I can also put Rosie up here way on the top. And if you have an issue where, for example, if Rosie was like that, like that doesn't look right. You would just go to position and then hit forward. It looks like I can change the colors as well. So I could change the color of this Swain set. I could change the color of Rosie. I could group them together by hitting Control G or the group button up here. You can move them around. And I usually like to do my books with bleed, so I'm not always super concerned about everything going past the edges on the margin. But I do try to make sure all the words and everything are not super close to the edge, just in case they do get cut off. But I do usually use bleed, so that's why I have the images going all the way over to the side. And honestly, then this is how I would create the book. I would just keep going through, and then I could do another page, and I could say, like, Rosie loves the slide. I mean, obviously you'd want to have a better storyline than what I'm doing. I'm kind of just making it up as I go right now, but then I could have Rosie at the bottom and I'd probably want to use an animal that could have different expressions. That way it's not just the same expression every time. Um, I know watching one of the YouTube videos, they explained how you could change their expression by adding like a circle element over where the mouth is and then inserting a different mouth or eye etc so that's something you could do if you couldn't find a character that has different expressions that's something that could definitely help but this is kind of how i've been creating my book and i know it's very simple again i'm very new to children's books but this is a great way to get started in my opinion so I want to show you the book that I've actually been working on and I'll kind of go through some of it. I'm not going to go through every single page, but this book is called Emily's Journey to Being Diagnosed with Celiac Disease, written by Taylor Hazelton. And I have this gluten-free symbol here. And now the reason I created this book is because I have celiac disease myself and it is not a disease that is well known, unfortunately. And when I looked up books on celiac disease for kids, there are some out there, but they're it's not a ton. Like, if you look up books on friendship or something like that, there are tons and tons of books out there. But for celiac disease, there really isn't. And being gluten-free and having celiac disease are not the same. I'm not going to get into that right now. But celiac disease is just so incredibly strict with what you have to do. And it's a complete lifestyle change. So, I wanted to create kind of an uplifting children's book. I do have my own personal book about my story called It's All in Your Head by Taylor Hazelton, and I just wanted to create something for kids. So I'll go through a few of the pages. They're very simple. It took me a day or two to make this, but this is my first page. Uh, Hi, my name is Emily. I have celiac disease. That means I can't have gluten. I want to share my journey with you. And then I just have a character here waving, and then I have this house in the background. And the next page is it all started on a random day at school. So I just have a school in the background. I added this little path in so that way there was like a walkway. And then I have Emily walking here on the path. And I tried to keep everything really simple because it is a children's book. And I tried to make sure that it was visible. It was okay. So I was eating my lunch when all of a sudden my stomach hurt so bad I wanted to cry. And then I added this desk in and I had to shrink this tray of food. And then Emily is in a sitting position, and there's no chair because you don't see the chair here. Um, but that's kind of how I organize that. I try to make it all proportional so that way it doesn't look out of place. But I'm really, really excited for this. It took me about at least two days, I think, to finish this. And I know that it could be done probably so much better, but for my first try at it, I'm really happy with it, and I just wanted to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks that I've learned and some of the things you could do to create your own children's book. I do recommend having your idea ahead of time, um, just because it kind of makes it easier if you have a storyline already of what you want to do and how you want to create your story than kind of winging it. I kind of winged it and knew what I wanted to do, so it was a little complicated, but it's okay. So... Once this book goes live, which hopefully it'll be approved soon, I'll show you all the cover and I'll show you the 
the actual posting and everything like that. But I hope this video was helpful. I know it wasn't as much of a tutorial as most of my videos, but I kind of like to share what I'm doing and, you know, just kind of give you guys an insight on some new things that I'm learning. So I really appreciate you watching this video and supporting my channel. Thank you so, so much for everything. I hope you all have a great day.